Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this particular video, I'm just going to discuss and tell about how did I learn machine learning in just 3.5 months. Okay. And uh, now when I'm working as a data scientist, I feel that it is a very good achievement. And, and I'm going to say you some of the techniques that I followed. Uh, two basic techniques that you need to follow, two basic practices that you need to follow is uh, you need to have very good dedication. And the second one is you need to have a very good time management, you know. Uh, so when I talk about dedications, guys, uh, let it be like if you're trying to learn any any technology just for one hour or two hours in a day, make sure that you're completely devoted into it and you're learning a lot of stuff, you know. And the second thing is time management. Why I'm saying time management is that please do not quit your job to learn a new technology if you want to switch into a data science domain. Make sure that whatever time and again, when I'm saying whatever time, that basically means suppose you're working in some companies, okay? And after the work gets over over there and you come back home and you try to devote some time, you know, to machine learning separately and make sure that you manage those time very nicely. From the past two years, I have managed my time uh, because of this time management, guys. Uh, I'll tell you that my, my career growth has been phenomenal, you know? Uh, it has is, it is gone to a very good level now. Uh, and this is all because of time management before that before that it was worst I, I used to not manage my time uh, properly you know I used to go to the office morning at 9 or 10 o'clock I used to come back at night 10 o'clock so I was not managing those time properly it is very very important you manage your time properly so whenever you go to the office right you make sure that you plan your day a day ahead uh, I mean you plan your day a day before itself uh, at, uh, so usually that is also my practice just uh, like tomorrow's planning i'll do it tonight only what i have to do at what time i have to complete this particular work and all so that i get time for other things also i get time with my family i get time uh, for you all also by creating this youtube videos and all uh, so i i try to do this in uh, and from past two years i'm doing it uh, very regularly i'm making sure that uh, it, this time management things work well and i've seen that the growth is phenomenal uh, the learning rate is phenomenal and my productivity is also increased you know in office time uh, suppose i used to take uh, take around some four to five hours for a particular work now for the same work i usually take one or two hours so when i start a work i seriously sit on that particular stuff i, I complete it and then, then only i get up again if that particular work is getting extended definitely i'll take a break but uh, I do not get disturbed uh, by anything right now. I just put my headphones in my ears. I, I, I focus on the work that I'm doing. I just create, I just start a music, some music I'll be listening and I do the complete work very clearly. Now, when I go back to this, uh, when I was learning machine learning guys, uh, this two thing had actually led me to complete it within 3.5 months and that to self-study. Now, when I say self-study, again, you can refer various blogs, materials, various YouTube, YouTube side, various tutorials and all. But uh, I was able to do that. And again, I'm saying that I'm not saying that I completed the whole machine learning. That cannot be possible. No one can be perfect in everything. Right. So for that, at least I was pretty much good that I can work in some companies as a machine learning engineer or as a data scientist. Again, I'm not including deep learning over here because deep learning is a completely different thing. Again, uh, for deep learning, I took another two months to complete it. And again, same thing, two things that is dedication and that and the second one is time management. I did it much more efficiently and I was able to learn it. Now, I'll just tell you uh, one thing that it is pretty, pretty much interesting because uh, the first uh, you know the uh, first code that i had written about uh, machine learning algorithm i directly imported pandas you know i imported pandas i wrote the import pandas and then i created df is equal to pd dot read underscore csv with my csv file name understand guys when i was writing this particular code i did not know python at that time i was still i did not even start python the first code in python was this only i imported pandas and i read the csv file as soon as i read the csv file right guys it was like I, that whole data frame got filled with the data that was present in the CSV and that actually increased my curiosity in short because if I was trying to write that code in same in .NET to read a CSV file I had to write some around 5 to 10 lines of code okay but with the help of Python and libraries like pandas I was able to do just one line and that triggered my interest you know that triggered my interest and the second thing was that as soon as I read the data set I gave it to a machine learning algorithm. I gave, I got the prediction. Now, this is how I started. Okay. Again, uh, I usually say reverse engineering, they do reverse engineering. Now, what does this reverse engineering do? 
Now, as soon as I implemented a machine learning algorithm, I got the output, right, uh, with the help of that regression. That, again, the another cu curiosity that in it increased in me, right? Like, how did it do that particular prediction? Then I go, I went and explored the algorithm first. You know, what that algorithm is basically doing, how it is creating that straight line. And then, when I heard about that equation y is equal to mx plus c, I knew that I, had, I read it in 12th standard, 10th standard somewhere, right? But now I was able to relate that to a real world scenario, right? Real world problem statement. And that was where, again, I, my interest got triggered, you know? And I was able to learn a lot. And as soon as that interest gets, you know, go, it, it increases, right? At that time, no one is going to stop you. The more interest will come, the more things you'll learn it, right? And after that, you know, now, that was the first algorithm I did. Now, the second problem was that what if I, if I get a complicated data set? You know, what will happen? So, I got a complicated data set. I imported it. Now, when I imported it, guys, again, I had to do a reverse engineering. Now, how to fix this missing values? How to fix this imbalanced data set? Right? Now, that was where I went into feature engineering. I went into feature selection. And that is how you do the reverse engineering. Then I went to understand about Pandas data frames in depth. You know about numpy arrays in depth because some or the other way whenever i was doing feature engineering i had to use pandas data frames right data series so that is how i explored i went back i i uh, it was just like uh in short you can just say top to down approach you know uh, so in that particular way i reversed uh, i did the reverse engineering in short and because of that my my concepts were getting stronger day by day and you see that whenever I teach something, uh, you've seen most of my, most of you have seen my YouTube videos. I make sure I, I tell you the same technique because guys, those technique are the better way to learn something very, very fast, you know, in a faster way, you'll be able to learn it. And that is very, very important, you know, and you'll also be understanding the importance of that. And many of you are also afraid with maths and statistics. Don't worry about that. First of all, catch that particular algorithm, which you want to learn. And automatically all the statistical concepts will come all the mathematical equations will come and i am definitely sure you may have read that in somewhere around 10th standard 11th standard 12th standard okay it's just you are trying to interlink with some use case right you are able to interlink with some use case you'll be able to understand it properly and that is how you should basically learn you know and that is the thing that you should follow guys to learn anything in a smarter way and that was the point that I followed because that was the easiest way to learn something new. Just imagine if I had a plan to learn machine learning, I'm taking three months to learn statistics different, uh, completely differently, right? Because I know that there may be some of the algorithms in statistics which will not be implemented in machine learning algorithms. Now, why I need to learn that? I don't want to become a PhD in statistics, right? In short, I want you to become a machine learning engineer or a data scientist, right? So. Cas the algorithm, which are the most famous algorithm, you know that they are linear regression, logistic regression, decision tree, random forest, XG boost, you know, principal component analysis. Catch those algorithms because those algorithms are the most widely used algorithms in today's uh, most of the business scenario. Catch them, you know, and then try to understand the maths, try to understand the statistics. In feature engineering also, right, statistical analysis I'll not do. Okay, let me just take a very good example. I'll, I usually solve Kaggle problems, guys. And um, I hope you've seen most of my Kaggle problems uh, already put up in the playlist, right? Suppose, how do I start a machine learning Kaggle problem statement? You know that. So what I do is that I download the data set. Fine, I have the data set. Now, first thing I'll do the feature engineering part. How do I handle the missing value? I'll apply only statistical analysis there. You know, whether I have to take the mean, mode, median, or should I take the end distribution and try to fix that particular problem. And once that is done, I handle the category feature and that's it. Okay, I do not drop any feature because I don't require to do that at that time. Okay, then I go and apply some machine learning algorithm with some hyper uh, hyper parameter tuning. I get the output and I see how how accuracy the how accurate the output is. Once I get the accuracy of that particular output, now if it is the accuracy is less, I have to try to increase it. Right, then I will go back. I'll reverse engineer now whether this feature is required, whether that feature is required. And that is that is the technique of competing in uh, Kaggle competitions. If you have not, I already have competed in one Kaggle, two Kaggle competitions, uh, and my group was somewhere around four to five people. Again, alone also you can participate because uh, if you work in four to five, at least you will be able to divide your uh, work. Now, in that, I was specifically doing that kind of work, and because of that, I had that particular experience saying you that I have to quickly do it. You know. So I have to make that particular time count. So usually whenever I'm solving any Kaggle competition, I usually tell you the time, like I have worked for four hours and I did all these things, you know, 
and that is how it is done now this is this is the thing that you should also follow guys uh, you should make sure that whatever work you are doing make make sure that you are uh, doing it in the most productive way and i'll tell you guys if i'm just considering myself as an average learner and i know that many of you are more smarter than me and i think you can complete just in 2 months you need to have some very good dedication to solve the problem statement and you should always try to understand why these things are happening you know why you are implementing this why you are doing this and that is the shortest technique to learn any technologies uh, that are actually present so uh, i hope you understood this particular video i hope uh, i was able to motivate you guys um, this is all about this particular video please do not stop learning always learn and make that habit that in a day you should at least learn for one hour learn something new okay keep that habit uh, because it will always be beneficial for your career growth so this was all about this particular video i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe the channel if you have not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead thank you one and all